Good day, friends, and a warm welcome to this MedBuzz video brought to you by the International Society of Endocrinology. I'm Dr. Sanjay Kalra, an endocrinologist working at Karnal in India. Let's talk today about neurological health in diabetes, something that we never think of. When we speak of diabetes, we are faced with so many things to talk about. Multiple pathophysiological factors, insulin deficiency, insulin resistance, multiple targets of these factors, the microvasculature, the macrovasculature, and all the viscera of the body. So many things that we have to take care of. We have to remember to manage blood pressure, to manage lipids, to optimize the weight, and of course, to manage glucose levels. Many drugs are available now to manage diabetes. These include the newer ones like GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors, which are known to have beneficial cardiovascular outcomes. But in all this discussion, when we are speaking of uh, glucose levels, and then when we are speaking of uh, cardiovascular outcomes, we tend to forget that mental health, brain health, neurological health is also important. So let's focus on that. Diabetes can lead to vascular disease. Microvascular disease will include neuropathy, including sensory, motor, and autonomic neuropathy. Macrovascular disease includes stroke, cerebrovascular accidents, which can be ischemic or hemorrhagic. And apart from that, the person with diabetes may present with diabetes uh, distress, anxiety, depression, or memory impairment. While Alzheimer's disease has its own set of diagnostic criteria, many, many, many people with diabetes may have mild cognitive impairment. These are all factors that we have to look at. Especially in persons with diabetes who are overburdened with so many things to do, so many medicines to take, there may be medical errors. In busy doctors as well, in busy endocrinologists clinics, it is possible that errors may occur. So what should we do? First of all, enhance awareness about diabetes dementia amongst all healthcare professionals. So we are doing that amongst your policymakers and planners and also members of the public. Do remember to strengthen yourself as a doctor. Exercise regularly. Take part in regular physical activities. Start a stimulatory hobby, maybe learning a new language or new music. Take relaxation breaks at work. Don't work continuously without stop. Apart from strengthening yourself, seek support from external sources like your pharmacist, your healthcare team, paramedical staff. So all these should be engaged in medication counseling so that errors can be reduced. Ask your patient for support as well. Tell them to cross-check and follow best practices like using a checklist or using protocols for metabolic stewardship, glucometric guardianship, or glycemic guardianship. The buzzword is mutual mentoring. If you are mentoring someone else, like your patient or your paramedical team, they also can mentor you back. That is the way to grow. If we are able to prevent medical errors in our work using these strategies, you can share the same with your patients so that errors can be minimized. While dealing with your patients, take a clear cut, a very careful history. Observe them carefully. And you may wish to use screening tools for cognition, including the MMSE, MOCA, ACE3, DART, and CSID. The MMSE or Mini Mental State Examination is a useful tool to uh, use in the clinic. Try to prevent dementia before it occurs. Control glucose in such a way that hypoglycemia and glycemic variability are minimized. Offer comprehensive metabolic care. Stop smoking. Start regular physical activity. And help your patients. Encourage them to attain a higher educational level through adult learning classes or vocational training or hobby learning. Now, when we are speaking of the brain of neurological health, we should not forget neuropathy. A lemon a day keeps neuropathy away, 
Lemon here means optimizing the lifestyle, endocrine function, for example, hypothyroidism, metabolic status, orthotic optimization. This would mean choosing the right footwear, the right shoes and socks, uh, using a support for walking if required, maybe a walking stick, and nutritional optimization. So L-E-M-O-N is lemon, endocrine, metabolic, orthotic, and nutritional. In nutritional optimization, make sure that macronutrients like proteins and micronutrients like vitamins, vitamin B, vitamin D, and minerals, iron and calcium are taken care of, are optimized. Our message would be to suspect neurological disease in everyone, to screen in the right manner, to stratify your patients according to risk, and to sort out this risk. What can we do to sort out? We can use newer drugs. Now, we spoke of SGLT2 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists. So GLP-1 RAs are now being tried not only in obesity and type 2 diabetes, but also in patients with Alzheimer's disease, those with mild cognitive, cognitive impairment, those with hypopituitarism, including central diabetes insipidus. All these are potential indications for GLP-1 RA. SGLT2 inhibitors are not far behind. They are also being tried in persons with diabetes and those without diabetes with Alzheimer's disease, stroke, mild cognitive impairment related to ischemia, vascular metabolic syndrome, and epilepsy. These are the ways in which we can improve neurological health in persons with diabetes. A focus on good clinical sense, comprehensive therapy, Avoid hypoglycemia. Create teamwork with your patient. Minimize the burden of drugs upon the patient. And secondly, use the newer drugs as per their indication, as per their product label or prescribing label. Note that the newer drugs like GLP-1 RA and SGLT2 inhibitors have not only glucotropic or glucose-lowering benefit, but also vasculotropic and viscerotropic. Vascular and visceral benefit. Thank you and we wish all the best to your patients and to you.